Hi, Internet Voyagers. We all love conspiracy theories, especially if they involve the CIA. I know I do. Now, that's probably why you clicked on this video anyways, right? So, today we're going to talk about the CIA, drug trafficking, and the Contras in Nicaragua. And unlike the movie Sicario, we do not have a high budget, award-winning actors, guns, or explosion. So, be prepared to have your mind blown by facts. Today's episode In 1979, the Sandinista National Liberation Front, or FSLN in Spanish, overthrew the United States backed Somoza government of Nicaragua. Now, this obviously enraged the US because we had a left wing government right at their footsteps. So, the Reagan administration could not just stand by and look as communist corrupted Latin America. So, they just followed their ever so successful recipe to overthrow governments. Step one find a government you don't like, in this case, the Sandinistas of Nicaragua. Step two allow the CIA to assemble, train, and arm a group of rebels outside the country of interest, or in extreme secrecy. In this case, they were arming the Contras, which we'll discuss shortly. Step 3. Start a war with a government you dislike. If you don't have the upper hand, resort to guerrilla-style warfare. And Step 4. You follow this recipe step by step. Your communist government should be overthrown in no time. So quit Stalin and put your preferred government in power. Wait. In 1981, following the instructions of the Reagan administration, the CIA assembled Nicaraguans in two major groups. Now, in the Northern Front, based off Honduras, was the Frente Democrático Nacional under the command of Adolfo Guerrero. The other group was based out of the South and had their base in Costa Rica, and they were called the Alianza Revolucionaria Democrática, or ARDE. Both of these groups surprisingly received a lot of funding by many unknown benefactors. Now, this is the point where we begin to trip into the hunting and baffling world of conspiracy theories. So now, why was the CIA involved in all of this? So the CIA was present in Nicaragua because they had to train the Contra rebels and arm them with weapons and knowledge to fight against the Sandinista government. So essentially, this is a conflict of ideology. The United States believed that capital capitalism and democracy were the only political system that would effectively control a country. And because of the fact that lots of South American countries were turning on to Marxist, communist type of governments, the U.S. had an ideology disagreement and antipathy towards those types of governments. When the U.S. Congress cut the funds for the CIA to arm, train men, and maintain the base camps in southern Honduras and northern Costa Rica for the Contra rebels, both of these groups had to find a way to make money. So this is when cocaine came in action, and what happened was that Colo from Colombia, the Medellin cartel shipped about 100 kilos of cocaine to Nicaraguan rebel groups in Costa Rica, where they received $50,000. Due to interventions from the CIA and budget cuts, we were removed from our studio and now placed in an unknown discreet location. There will be a video in the description about an interview to Jerry Webb, who explains to these men how the drug trafficking worked using a diagram published by himself in the newspaper. This diagram, called the Pipeline, shows the different routes that drugs took in order to get from Colombia all the way to the US. What the rebels were supposed to do was to first guard the Colombian drug-filled plane landing, then take the drugs to San Jose, where they guarded for three days until it was picked up. Drug trafficking was the only option for the Contras and the CAA to raise any funds, since the Boland Amendment had prohibited them from receiving any funds from the United States as they were as they were receiving until 1982. Then the second and final Boland Amendment prohibited the CIA, Department of Defense, or any other agency or entity of the United States to involve in intelligence activities from receiving any funds that would either directly or indirectly benefit any groups, organizations, movement, or individuals to help overthrow the Sandinista Nicaraguan government. According to an article published by Brian Barger in the Associated Press, even the Contras offered to turn in drug dealers for $50,000, the same amount of money that they were getting paid to help out, to the U.S. Embassy, but the deal was rejected. 
Once again, here is the presence of ideology noticeable from the United States. As I mentioned earlier, because of their strong disagreement with the Sandinista government, they allowed Contra rebels to continue in the process of drug smuggling since it was their only and best source of money income. Another example is John Ho, an ex CIA operative that owned a ranch in Costa Rica with six airstrips. He was recruited by the National Security Council, aid Oliver North, when he established a private supply network in for the Contra Rebels. According to a 1987 article by jo Jonathan Whitney for the Nation newspaper, the Contras say that weapons were unloaded from Morales' plane in Ilopango for transfer to smaller planes, which then flew to Hull's ranch or to Contra camps inside of Nicaragua. Morales contends that his C-47 would continue on from Ilopango to Colombia, where it was reloaded with drugs before flying back to Florida. Morales was a known Colombian drug dealer for one of the biggest cartels in the country. Ilobango is a region in San Salvador. It refers to specifically to an airstrip. As wacky as all of this might sound, it's not an unusual thing for drug dealers to try and accomplish. They knew that if they helped CIA-backed operations in Latin America, their sentences during prosecutions had a huge chance of being reduced. Allegedly, the CIA helped Contras and drug traffickers bring in narcotics into LA's African-American community to fund the covert war against the Sandinista government of Nicaragua. Evidence of this war was never found, but not in a lot of cases when asked about the topics, the CIA would hide their heads. Frederick P. Hitz, CIA's Inspector General, in 1996 was instructed to conduct an investigation regarding the recent allegations by San Jose Mercury News. To accomplish this, he used an investigation staff composed of 17 people, had access to 250,000 pages of classified documents, and conducted more than 365 interviews under oath. Two years later, in a statement to the House Committee on Intelligence, the CIA's Inspector General admitted that, during the Contra era, we worked with a variety of people to support the Contra program. These included CIA assets, pilots, who ferry supplies to the Contras as well as Contra officials and others. Let me be frank about what we are finding. These, there are instances where CIA did not in any expeditious or consistent fashion cut off relationships with individuals supporting the Contra program, who were alleged to have engaged in drug trafficking activity or take action to resolve the allegations. The CIA's Inspector General also admitted in 1990 that the agency did not inform Congress of all allegations or information it received indicating that contra-related organizations or individuals were involved in drug trafficking. G giving the U.S. Congress information that the CIA failed to tell Congress about allegations they have received against at least eight individuals with contra ties. This breaks a major law and would have made Congress stop the funding for the CIA. The CIA's interest in funding the contra guerrillas led to the blind eye policy used on many drug dealers that were funding those, those groups. As the CIA made secret alliances with contra-connected traffickers, the DEA was looking for these drug lords in Latin America. The CIA never informed the DEA because they had an interest on in drug money to fund the war against the Sandinistas. One example is in 1985, a press carried a story about Nicaraguan rebels operating in northern Costa Rica have engaged in cocaine trafficking, in part to help finance their war against Nicaragua's leftist government. It was discovered that people who supported the Contras were involved with drug handling. The CIA provided anti-Sandinistas with about $806,000 paid by State Department to four companies owned and operated by narcotic traffickers. The Contra drug links included involvement in narcotics trafficking by individual association with Contra movement. The of narcotics traffickers in Contra supply operations through business relationships with Contra organizations Provision of assistance to contracts by narcotic traffickers, including cash, weapons, planes, pilots, air supply services, and other materials on a voluntary basis by the traffickers. Payments to drug traffickers by the U.S. State Department to fund of authorized by the Congress for humanitarian assistance to the, to the contracts. In some cases, after traffickers had been integrated by federal law enforcement agencies on drug charges. In others, while traffickers were under active investigation by these same agencies. What happened in the 1980s should not be repeated in the future. A lot of people were affected and killed due to the actions that the U.S. government took. All the cocaine that was smuggled into the U.S. and later returned into crack cocaine had a massive effect on the American population. 
This effect was so large that this era is often referred to as the crack epidemic. Furthermore, this can teach future generations that forcefully imposing an ideology on other nations is not the correct thing to do, especially if you're using drug money to fund this undertaking. When it comes to helping a country into accepting any type of political view, starting a civil war or a dictatorship is not the best way. As I said before, neither is direct intervention by a more powerful nation such as the US. Instead, a more diplomatic route should be followed sending delegates to help government officials, providing logistical support to the country, or signing pacts are much safer ways of helping a country in development or in chaos. What the future generation should take from the Contra scandal is that diplomacy is often the better path to a brighter future. Undercover operation, cover-ups, and classified information, even if they are considered to be for the public good, are not viable options, as they lead to conspiracy theories such as this one, doubt, fear, and even mistrust towards the government. The Machiavellian belief that the ends justify the means has been distorted to a dangerous degree. When government agencies are allowing gigantic amounts of drugs to enter the country so they can find a war of ideology, they have gone too far. Also, stopping countries' development because of your own ideology is a bad way to confront the problem. This could likely lead to war, corruption, and development of setbacks for such country. Thank Thanks for watching! Hey, hey, that was my part. Come down, guys. Thanks for watching. If you like it, let us know in the comments below. Uh, hit the like button as well. And we'll see if we're going to make more of these videos. Subscribe. So. And if you want to follow us anywhere, click right here. here. Or here. Here.